Okay. Um, let's see. What's your full name? Tom what Potts? Thomas? Thomas S. Thomas S. Potts? Yeah. What's that stand for, the S? Seal. S-E-A-L. Oh, really? It was my grandmother's maiden name. Thomas Seal Potts. Is that how they used to name people? By their grandmother's maiden name? Is that yeah, your grandma's last so, name? Because that's where the seal came from. Okay. See, my dad was born in England. Okay. He came over here before World War One. So when were you born? In Litchfield, Illinois. What field? Litchfield, L-I-T-C-H-F-I-E-L-D. Okay, Litchfield, Illinois. What brought your dad from England to America? He came over in about 1912, I think, but I don't know for sure. Okay. What was he doing? What brought? Why did he come? Well, his brothers were all over here. Okay. <laughs> so they sent for him. He's the youngest one in the family. Generation. Okay. And uh, what did he do for a living? Well, he ran a, a factory where they melted down the iron and made radiators and pipe cast iron pipe. And uh, you know what a radiator is? Yeah, for a car? No, for houses. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, they get real hot and you can't touch them. To heat up house, right? What? They get real hot and you're not supposed to touch them when you're a kid. Oh, no, they're... I, I don't remember that part of it. But they're, they almost, they, they've got the, they look like bellows or, or they, I know what they are, yeah. I think. They're heaters though, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, they're very efficient type heaters. Yeah, my brother lived in New York City, and he lived in an old place, and he had a radiator heater. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's an old building that was built probably something like pretty close to a hundred years ago. I bet you so. I'm sure. I know my, my one of my granddaughters when she was going to the University of Chicago, her her apartment when she was working on her doctor degree was in an old place and when I told her right there, she knew exactly what she knew what it was yeah well see I, I was thinking car radiator um, and how many brothers and sisters do you have did you have just two brothers two brothers and did they go to the military nope you well, my one? younger brother did get in the Navy just at the end of World War two he did yeah oh so how long did you serve in the military I served 20 years 20 years in the military what rank did you retire at? Major. Major. Major pots. Yeah. And uh, that's a uh, 04 or oh, now I, I should know what that is. 01 lieutenant, second lieutenant, captain, major. That's 04, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. I never thought about it that way. <laughs> well, they call them. That's how we. That's a grade. We still use that, or we use that now. Yeah. Um. Let's see. So. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say it's easier just to say the rank. <laughs> yeah, but then you get mixed up because if you the, all the different military branches have different, like captain is a higher ranking. In the Navy, it's a, yeah, it's like a, a it's kind of like a colonel in the Navy. Yeah, so that's why I do. Yeah. That. Okay. But I still don't. I'm not very good at that kind of stuff. Um, so uh, Litchfield, Illinois, uh, you go normal. Did you? 29 November 1918. 20. No, no, I was going to ask when you went, where you went to school and like you uh, went to normal 12 years of high, 12 years of school, yeah. graduated? Yeah, and then I went to the University of Illinois. University. You never graduated though. <laughs> you never graduated? No. Uh, well, tell me about, let's talk about uh, school in Illinois in probably 1923. You So you were around for the Depression. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so tell me what that was like, I guess. Oh, boy, that was a mess. My dad, well, well everybody was hurt. <laughs> yeah. Did your dad keep his job? Yeah. Did he Did he run, he ran the factory? Did he own the factory? He's uh, a, no, no, it was American Radiator and Standard Sanitary. Okay. And he ran a part of the factory. And so he's like a manager or... Yeah. Production manager yeah. or something. Yeah. And uh, let's see what else can I. Um, so 
So your dad kept his job during the Depression. Yeah. And uh, did you guys have to cut back or? Well, I, as to the best of my knowledge, we did fairly well, but much better than the surrounding. <laughs> yeah, so you saw a lot of people who were in yeah. soup lines and stuff like that? Yeah, or? well, the, the, what money you had practically went because the stock market just... Oh, so their savings all went up. Yeah, you, that's what I say. So your parents' savings and all that stuff went down and... Yeah. Uh, it was rough. Yeah. See, so 1918, so you're probably uh, 12 or so about the time that the Great Depression was hitting yeah. pretty hard. Um, uh, actually, 29 is when the... Uh, so 11. Yeah, it was when the, uh, it really got bad. Yeah. And it just stayed bad until World War II. Yeah. Um, you remember anything about the presidents or any big news stories that happened oh. during your childhood? Nothing that I could remember. To <laughs> so no big deal. Yeah, like the New Deal was that big thing for that was before World War Two, wasn't it? Or was what? after the New Deal? Uh, the New Deal. Well, that was when Roosevelt came. Yeah. In. And did you yeah. like Roosevelt? Everybody liked Roosevelt. Oh, everybody did. Okay. Well, I liked Hoover, the guy that was before. You liked Hoover? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, he. he Took a real bad spill, if you ask me. Yeah. Oh, so he yeah. didn't do as bad as what history says he did. Well, I don't know. Anyway, I was just thinking that what is that big dam out in uh, Hoover Dam? Yeah. Yeah. Hoover dam. <laughs> I, we were there when they were building that. Oh, really? Yeah. My grandparents lived in Sacramento. And we lived in Litchfield, or well, and then we moved to Springfield, uh -huh. Illinois. But we go out there every summer, see them. God. So it used to. Well, let's see. So in 19, 1930, you were driving from Illinois to California. Yeah. And they didn't have a national highway at that no, time. Oh heavens, no. So how was uh, how was that trip? How long did that take? I don't know. I don't remember how long now. You don't remember riding in the back of a car? Oh, and, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, my dad usually went, but one time he couldn't go, so my mother took us. Uh-huh. And did y'all enjoy the trip out there? Oh, or was, yeah. Really? Yeah. It's, see, one thing I remember about it was that you get out in the desert mm -hmm. and there was dips in the road mm -hmm. where the water run across. Yeah, <laughs> it tore away the road. Or... <laughs> See, that's to even nowadays. From I, I drove to California on a highway, and that's a long drive. Yeah. And in the yeah, I didn't have air conditioning when I went. I went in June, and that's a hot. Oh, well, that's a hot drive. Yeah. So were you? Did you go in the summertime when y'all visited? Oh yeah. Ah, see, that's incredible. Y'all didn't think, and then y'all didn't have a highway system. You had to use. Oh, uh, you had a highway system. You had one you could follow, like Route sixty six. Yeah, sixty six. <laughs> but that, when did Route sixty six get completed? Was that? I don't remember that. Uh, see, I thought that wasn't that long ago. Um, well, sixty six is what we the way we go out there. I know. And uh, let's see. So, when you were in grade school, did you play any sports? No, I was. Well, I was in bed for thirteen months when I was seven years old, and I walked on crutches for two years after that. Why were you in bed for thirteen months? Well, they didn't know what I had. Oh yeah. <laughs> so anyway, they said I had tuberculosis of the bone, my left hip. And that's what I thought I had. Did you ever find out what you had? Yeah, when I went in the cadets, yeah. the aviation cadets, so I, I put down that I had tuberculosis of the bone, and the doctor says, can't take you if you have that. Yeah. He says, but if you put Perthes disease, <laughs> you can go through. <laughs> Perthes disease? Yeah. Is that what you really had? Yeah, that's evidently what I really had. Is that P-E-R-T-H-E-S? Yeah. That's what I asked him. How do you spell it? <laughs> yeah, I've never heard of it. And so it just went away on its own? Well, uh, afterwards, yes. It, uh -huh. 
it was never never went all, all the way away uh -huh. because that's the hip I had to have replaced. Okay, about four years ago. So uh, you, uh, how did you do? Get how did you do in school? Like, were you a good student? Or? <laughs> Just average, I guess. Average student. Okay, yeah. nothing. <laughs> Do you have any big memories of uh, grade school, like any friends that stood out? Oh, yeah. And one teacher that I never will forget. She, okay. She, she said, I want your eye. <laughs> she, she wants your eye? Yeah. She When she was talking, she wanted everybody to be looking at her. <laughs> oh, okay. Did you like that? Did you think she was a good teacher? Yeah. Did you ever use that, I want your eye, whenever you were teaching student pilots or anybody? Or? Well, when I was teaching a little, I used to do a lot of... A lot of stuff after the war. I, you know, you need some clerical type people, and mm -hmm. you could just set up a school and get some typewriters in and teach them how to type. And I can't type, but I could teach them how to type. You, you didn't know how to type, but you taught them how to type? <laughs> that doesn't seem. No, you tell them to keep their eye on the board, boy. That's what you do. Oh, all right. Well, huh. <laughs> it works. That's interesting. I, I took type in class, and I think my teacher knew how to type. <laughs> <laughs> but I never learned. What, uh, so when you graduated high school, what uh, was your, you went straight to the University of Illinois? Yeah. And what was your plans to, uh, what, was you, what were you going to plan on graduating with? Or what was your... Well, I really didn't have any idea. Just going off to school? I just went off to school for a good time. <laughs> okay. Well, that sounds good. Good time. How, how, how much school did you complete? Two and a half years. So you were a junior? Yeah. Did you have a pretty good uh, grade point average? Not too good, but it was good enough. It didn't kick me out. <laughs> good enough. Okay. And... Uh, so at that point, did you go straight from University of Illinois to, uh, did you go into the Air Force? No, I went in the Army. Army? And uh, did they, what, what year was this? Uh, I, was, I was drafted in 41. 1941, so they didn't have an Air Force, uh, it was Army. Yeah, the Army Air Corps. Army Air Corps. Um, but I was drafted, so I went into the infantry. Army infantry, and uh, so you're drafted into the infantry, yeah. and what happened? What did they do with you? Well, then I was stayed in the infantry about a year, I think. Uh -huh. Then I met a friend of mine out in California. We were in General Patton's uh, Desert Training Center. Mm -hmm. You didn't yeah. ever meet Patton or see him, did you? What? You didn't ever see Patton, did you? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was I was a corporal at the time. <laughs> and so corporals enlisted like a uh, how many stripes? Uh, two. Two striper. Yeah. Okay, so what? Tell me real quick what you saw when you saw Patton. What was he like? Well, we were in we were out in the desert training center, mm -hmm. and we were at a half track, and I had a half track. What was a half track? Is that a tank? No, it's. it's Got wheels on the front and tracks on the back. Okay, okay. And anyway, we, we were the scout for the our army. Mm -hmm. And what we'd do, they'd tell us where to move and which way to go, and mm -hmm. we'd do whatever they were told. Mm -hmm. So they had us stop, and so they said you had to be at least 50 feet away from the half track, the circle around it. And it was hotter blazes out there yeah. in Desert Train, in the yeah. Death Valley. Yeah. Anyway, so rather than being in, in circled around like, like we were told us to, yeah. why, we were all sitting in the shade. And <laughs> of the track. Yeah. Of the <laughs> and who should, who should drive up in his tank with cotton? <laughs> oh. So he put me under arrest and took my pistol. <laughs> he put General Pat himself? Yeah. <laughs> wow. <coughs> anyway, he said, you and your... Was he yelling at you? What? Was he yelling at you or was he just calmly doing it? Oh, he sort of uptight a little bit. 
So like, so okay, so he saw you sitting in the shade, and he yeah. he was in the inside a tank. You know, he was sticking his head out of the top of the tank. Okay, and did he yell at you from the tank, yeah. or did he? Yeah, who was in charge? <laughs> so I went over and. Reported. And you were in charge. Yeah. <laughs> Piss. Anyway, uh, he said, I want you and your commander to be in my office Saturday morning at 9 o'clock. Yeah. So, in Captain Peterson and I go, and, and he's, he's laughing. He's <laughs> Captain Peterson's laughing? No, Patton was laughing. Yeah? He was saying, I wonder what kind of effect this had. <laughs> On you? On um, the whole, our whole lot. <laughs> so like the, the, in between the time you told you to meet there and the time that you actually reported, were you nervous? Well, I wasn't excited. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, he was laughing, but he said that he was just trying to get everybody to think the same way because he said, what you got to do, you got to do what you're told. Yeah. Period. And. Then he said, that's the only way you're going to make it through the war, and we're not trying to get any, any of us killed on our own. <laughs> yeah, and holy moly, that's incredible. Yeah, so, so that isn't the end of it, though. Okay. So a couple of weeks later, while we were in L.A. again, just some of us went in, mm -hmm. and some captain came up to me and said, are you Tom Potts? And I said, yes, sir. He said the general would like to talk to you, so I, <laughs> I go over and sit in the back seat of his car with him. Yeah? And he says, how is it affecting the whole, your whole outfit? Yeah? And I said, everybody shook up. <laughs> <laughs> and do you think uh, what General Patton did, did you think uh, that was good leadership or did oh, that, yeah. Yeah. that affect you? Yeah. Okay. Wow, that's okay. And so that was that was the last you talked to. And that's the last I've seen of that. Wow. Okay. So so when you were in the infantry, you said you had a friend in California that you went and met. Oh well, no. I kid that I'd known him practically all my life. Yeah. And he was a lieutenant. He had gone to aviation cadets right after. Oh, so he went straight to the aviation cadets rather than being drafted. Yeah, well, he went, well, he he was an aviation cadet before the war started. Okay, okay. And anyway, I ran into Bernie, and what is Bernie's last name? You know, Muldoon. Muldoon. Okay. I mean, he was an aviation cadet, but he was from uh, oh, Illinois no, was, as well? He was a lieutenant. He was already out of aviation, okay. out of cadets. And but was he from Litchfield? No, he was from Springfield. Okay, okay. That's where I graduated from high school, in Springfield. Okay. Anyway, uh, there was a bunch of us who went down to see if we could get in aviation cadets. And he was one of them, and I was one of them. <laughs> Okay. But of course I didn't have the education so they wouldn't let me in. <laughs> okay. Anyway, Bernie said, well, boy, they're looking for pilots. And so he, he was flying P-38s. Mm -hmm. And he was there at uh, Los Angeles. And so he said, he took me back to his squadron with him and met his commander. And then they made arrangements for me to put in for cadets. <laughs> Even without an education? Well, yeah. Even, well, you didn't have to have the education then that you had to have before the war. Oh, okay. Okay. So, and so uh, how many guys did you, did that? Do you know? Well, there was four of us, and I was the only one who didn't make it. <laughs> oh, you didn't make it? Well, I didn't make it when the first time I tried because I didn't have the education. Oh, okay. They told me to go back to college. <laughs> okay, but then because you knew Bernie. Well, Bernie took me and introduced me to his commander and said that I would always want to be a pilot anyway. So yeah. They told me, go ahead and put in and they'd see what they could do to help me. So sure enough, they did. <laughs> did you ever... Uh did you ever get your education? You ever finished a college degree? No, nope, never did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. 
for okay. And how many pilots did you know that didn't have their uh, four years of college or whatever? Oh well, during the war, like me, they didn't have to have it. Yeah, was there lots of guys who didn't? Oh yeah. Okay, lots of guys flew with that. Yeah. Okay. In fact, a lot of them. Well, no, never mind. That's just not, doesn't make any difference. Well, then, a lot of them didn't go to any school, or. Well, the, the main thing was they wanted bodies. <laughs> yeah. So what what determined then if they didn't have that as a as a reason to? Well, I don't know. This is all I know is I got in. Okay, so you don't know what so what kept other guys who just stayed in the infantry why they yeah. stayed in the infantry. Well, see, if you didn't make it as a pilot, why well, then they'd make you either bombardier or navigator usually. Okay. <coughs> so okay. You, or you'd end out as a gunner if you were. All right. So when you, uh, so you got into training, you got accepted, they, what did they train you on? Well, well, we, they had a certain procedure, you got, you go to, you go to, uh, uh, well, what did they call it, free flight, and that lasted about a month, and then you go to... What, what is free flight? Well, they just orient you to the Air Force, to the Air Corps. Okay. And then you go to basic. Uh, primary, I should say, primary, basic, and then advanced, and then it takes about eleven months. Basic and advanced is all all uh, different. Well, you fly different birds. Oh, really? So, what do you fly as a primary? Oh, that's your primary plane that you're going to fly. You know, primary, it was that's the first plane you fly, mm -hmm. and I think that was a. I don't worry about. It. Do you remember any of them? Basic or advanced? Well, the basic was a BT thirteen and BT thirteen. Yeah, and uh, advanced was a UC seventy eight. UC. Only trouble, only thing was that they needed people to fly the uh, uh, B twenty six. Now this is the old B four and the straight they called it. It was uh, real heavy wing loading. And it, it had a good combat record, mm -hmm. but they they had an AT9 then that that I that they put me in, mm -hmm. and then I went to the B26 mm -hmm. for the uh, training. In the the only trouble was that that you had to be five foot five seven and weigh a hundred and. Fifty pounds, and I didn't qualify in either. You one. had to be taller and heavier, or? taller and heavier, because it, you lose an engine on that thing. It, if you couldn't control it, you were out of luck. And on B twenty six, you had to be five seven, one hundred fifty yeah, pounds. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So B twenty six. I'm sorry. Yeah. So they booted me out of that. Okay. And then they made me a co pilot on the B twenty four. Cool. Okay. And that's what you flew throughout the war? Yeah. Um, all right, so I guess tell me a bit about B-24. Well, let's see that picture over there on the wall. Yeah. That's a B-24, like kind of we flew. Okay. And did it have, did, it was a combat plane and had a tail gunner and uh Oh, that, have what? A tail gunner or a... Oh, yeah. Had, had The crew was four officers and six enlisted. Okay. And the four officers were uh, two pilots, a navigator... And the bombardier. Okay. And then the enlisted guys? Well, there was the engineer, radio operator, and the rest of them were gunners. Gunners. Okay. And RO and gunners. And uh, when y'all flew together, uh, did y'all pretty much fly with the same crew every time? Uh, yeah, yeah. So you well, got yeah, to know, yeah. know these guys pretty well? What? You knew these guys pretty well? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We... Uh, where was I now? I had something I was going to say. Oh, well, yeah, our bombardier was killed over the target on September the 10th, I think it was, 44. Who was that? Tommy McGovern. He was over a target? Which target? Oh, I don't remember now. Was it in Germany? 
I don't remember where it was. It was someplace up in in that area, but I hadn't thought about where it was. <laughs> yeah. What uh um was it a a bullet that you know flak flak. We were over the target and he's a little like I am only he's only I was little than he is. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. We had flak suits and then helmets that we wore when you're in the flak. Yeah. And I guess a piece of flak went right to his heart because he didn't have his jacket on. Jacket on. Oh. Yeah. If it, if he'd had it on, it'd been all right because he. Yeah, would have stopped it. Yeah. Um. So what would flak come from? From other planes? Ex oh no, from the, the, the enemy. Shooting up 155 millimeter guns. Okay. And they they see they could tell just exactly what your height was with radar. So you could you really read it when you're going through it. You've seen I don't know, if you've watched the movies. You see these black puffs. Yeah. Well, that's, that's those shells blowing up in front of you. Okay. Oh, so they blow up and then pierce the aircraft. Yeah. You know, you could get a hundred holes in your airplane sometimes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, so how did you do on pilot training on the B twenty four? Well, then you. Oh, I'm skipping some. Well, they had a training session for the for the people like I was going B twenty sixes. Mm-hmm. When they booted me out of that because they said you couldn't control it on if you lost an engine, and we were down in Tampa, Florida, flying them. Yeah. Anyway, they had about well, I guess it was six weeks of training in that plane, and then they assembled. A, then they put me as a co-pilot in the B-24, mm -hmm. and we had our re replacement training. In other words, you train as a crew, and you train and yeah, everything else about it. Mm -hmm. And then after that, as an illustration, we were where the heck were we? Then? We, we had a in '44 is when it was. On Easter Sunday, we were at. Hmm. I can't think of the name then, and in. Arizona, where we were taking our recruit re replacement training. Hmm. Anyway, it snowed, so we didn't have to fly on Easter. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> that was what I was getting. It snowed at. in Arizona. Yeah. Oh, I guess does it snow in Arizona a lot? It can't. No, it don't last long. They, yeah, that was in April or March, April. Yeah, I don't remember, but it was forty-four. <laughs> okay, and so. And that was that's where you trained in Arizona from the B twenty four for replacement training. Yeah, and that's because they replaced you from a B twenty six to a B twenty four. Is that why they called it that? No, the the B twenty six was a twin engine. Yeah, and the B twenty four was a four engine. Yeah. So the B twenty six had nothing to do with me flying in the B twenty fours. Okay, no. But why they call it replacement training? Well, because we were getting ready to replace crews already overseas. Oh, okay, I got you. I got and you. And we just, as soon as you got trained and we were ready, then the way you'd go and. Okay, what? Uh, so when you got trained, you're saying right as soon as you graduated, or completed training? Well, completed aviation cadets. Yeah. And you got commissioned. Yeah. And then, you would go into this. Training to whatever bird they want you to fly. Okay. okay. And they went in two B 26s for me, but then they said that I don't know why they didn't realize this before. Beforehand, yeah. <laughs> but they put me in a B 24, and it was worse than a B 26. As far as moving the yoke and handling it? Yeah. Okay. Because you lose an engine on takeoff on that thing, and they, what they do is you. Line everybody up, mm -hmm. and then they, as soon as it was your turn to go next, why well, then there'd be 
three airplanes on the runway at mm -hmm. one time. Mm -hmm. And then the prop war should be something terrible. So I know when I was when I was flying, I, got, I became a pilot. I mean, first pilot shortly after we got over there. Mm -hmm. And I. As soon as he'd get off the ground, I'd slip it off to the side of the runway. The engineering officer always turned his back. <laughs> Why would you do that? I just get out of the prop war so that from the you, aircraft in front of you. Yeah, uh -huh. two, two of them on the run. Well, you start out, and there's two ahead of you already. Mm -hmm. And so, if you're flying too close to another airplane, all uh, the all the it wind stirs or, up the air, and, and it's harder to control. And that's why you would veer off to yeah, the side. Yeah. Would you come close to the edge of the runway? Is what. Oh, well, you try to get off the runway. Yeah, <laughs> but it was scary the way you did it, huh? Yeah, but nobody seemed to say anything except the engineering officer wouldn't look. <laughs> well, all right. And, uh, so, okay. That big guy's house is the oldest guy on the crew. <laughs> yeah? How tall are you? you know, at that time, I was about 5'5". Five, 5'5", five. Five, five. okay. Weighed about 130. 5'5", five, five, 130. Okay, and so uh, did did the crew that you trained with on there? Did is that who you uh, deployed yes. with? Yeah. So who were the pilots, the other guys that you uh, that you were on your crew? Well, Norb Kuska. Hot Norm. Norb. N O R B. N O R B. E R T, of course, is Norbert Kuska. Okay. How did you say his last name? Kuska. K U S T K A. Oh, okay. Never heard that kind of name before. Yeah. Okay, and he was another pilot. Yeah. Was were you a co-pilot? Yeah. Okay. For an hour, yeah. Okay, and then uh, who was your nav? Do you My remember? Navigator. Yeah. Alvin Platt. Alvin Platt. I don't know why you're putting names down. None of them are around. <laughs> oh, I'm not. Gonna, uh, I'm, I'm just just for history. Uh, did you like all these guys? Oh yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, do you remember uh, engineer? Well, you didn't write down oh. bombardier. Okay. Oh no, I did. Tommy. Uh, Tommy Mc McGovern. Right? McGovern. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got him. The engineer was John Devine. And uh, let's see. Uh, you said two gunners or three gunners? Uh, no, there was six gunners. Oh, who's the RO? Do you remember? Uh, the, See a radio operator? Well, the radio operator was Jim Roach. Jim Roach? Yeah. Okay. All right. Then the nose gunner was Nolan Abair. Nolan. N-O-L-A-N? Yeah. A-B-E-R? H-E-B-E-R-T. He's Cajun. Oh, okay. Hey, Bert. <laughs> so, uh... And the tail gunner was Bobby Moore. Tail gunner was who? Bobby Moore. Bobby Moore? M O O R E. Okay, I gotcha. All right. And the engineer top gunner was, oh, I said gave you John Devine, though, didn't I? Yeah. I okay, the Sperry Ball gunner, the guy that hangs okay. down on the bottom. Yeah. was Herbert Wagman. Have you got 10 names? See, I got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, and then you nine. So. Uh, well, then the, the, the waist. Oh, no, see, we had two waist gunners. Okay, waist gunners, probably yeah. what I'm missing. That was uh, Dudek. D U D E K? Yeah. Do you remember his first name? Oh, heavens. Don't worry about it. I always called him Porky. <laughs> Porky. That's good enough. <laughs> no, it isn't. Good. That's it, not his name. Was he chubby? Yeah, a little chubby, not much. What was Herbert's last name again? Her, the ball gunner? Or the, uh... Herbie Waymeyer. Waymeyer? Wagman, Wagman, Wagman. Okay. Uh, you have any stories about those guys, like Norbert or... Well, uh, they have them crazy drinkers or partiers or womanizers oh, well. or... The worst partier we had was the, the, the bombardier. <laughs> bombardier, Tommy. There we go. The one that was killed. Yeah. So what do you do? Like, do you have a story of him partying? <laughs> well, he was partying all the time. To me. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. He'd disappear and I didn't show up. <laughs> okay, I know guys like that. <laughs> he was a good egg, don't get me wrong. No. And uh, oh, no, uh, one time we had a fire in the Bombay and and Roach, and Roach uh, called and said, we've got a fire in the Bombay, and I said, well, damn it, put it out. <laughs> yeah. And he did. <laughs> Roach put out fire. He yeah. got us, uh, oh. you about to say Silver Star, but that's not what? it. I thought you were about to say Silver Star. Uh, did he get an award for putting out the fire? A medal? Yeah, uh, what is it? Did you use a fire extinguisher? What? Yeah. Well, and did y'all continue the mission? What? After the fire was out? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you don't turn around and come back. <laughs> About once you turn around and come back, they just about ready to shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what in the Sam Hill did he get? Oh, I bet you, I bet you that's that's hist historical somewhere. That yeah, somebody I gotta, somebody who knows how to look up historical things would be able to find that medal. Yeah. I'm sure. Um, oh, uh, I, I think an air medal, but that's not it. It's uh, oh, we got meritorious sir. Um, merit. Well, this was a one in, for combat. Yeah, I I don't know. Oh, it's a, it's a typical this, one. Boy. Disting, distinguished Flying Cross? Or Flying yeah, Cross? Yeah, yeah, that was it, I think. Yeah. What caught on fire, do you know? It was just hydraulic fluid. Oh, okay. I don't know how it got started, but... So, uh, were you married at this time? Nope. Nope. Um... We'll get to that. You got married after you got out of the service? No, no, after you came back home? Yeah. Well, see, you fly so many missions in, in the Air Corps mm -hmm. in Europe and they'd send you home. Yeah. During the war, which really shocked me. Yeah. Was, well, I mean, you fly 20 missions and then no, that's, no, that's a tour. 50. Oh, 50 missions? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's more than I thought. Um, so you fly 50, you come home, and then they could send you back again, right? Yeah, but they they didn't because I thought they probably would. Because as far as I could see, there wasn't anything wrong with me. Yeah. <laughs> but they put me in the hospital as soon as I got back here, after I had my leave. Do you do you psychological stress or something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I had to do was see the psychiatrist once a week. <laughs> And that's all you did for work? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, they had a fancy hospital down there at Don Cesar. Uh-huh. Did you, did you know other guys in that hospital who were uh, really mentally... No, I didn't know any that were, because I got married then shortly after we got in there. That's so uh -huh. when I went back and got my wife. And... Did you know her before you went? Oh, yeah. Okay. How did you know her? Well, I met her when she was younger, and so was I. <laughs> when you were younger? Yeah. Was she from Springfield as well? You no, know, well, my folks moved to St. Louis. Uh huh. So I went home then, and that's where I met her. Okay. And that's the one that was in there. <laughs> no, no, I saw. I'm, yeah, yeah, I know. I've been married she... 64 years. 64 years. Last so, Tuesday. So when did y'all get married then? Huh? What, what, what was the date you got married? So, what is this? 14 April. April. 14 April, what year? 45. Okay. And let's go... Uh, okay, let's talk about your missions. Where is where your base that you were flying out of? Cherignola, Italy. Say it again? Cherignola. Cherignola. And was there a base there, obviously? Yeah. We had twin runways on there. And where were most of your missions over? Well, from, we hit some in Germany, Czechoslovakia, Austria. Uh, the biggest one we hit most of the time was Polesti. Say it again? Polesti. P-O-L? P-O-L. Don't worry about it. I, I never, is that, that's a country? No, it's Polesti is the name of a town. 
Oh, in, in what country? Czechoslovakia? No, uh... Boy. <laughs> uh, working, working out your... It's, it's where they were producing most of the... Germany was producing most of their fuel. Okay. German fuel. I'll find that out. Okay, and uh, so what time did you arrive into Cherignola, Italy? What year? What? In June, I, th I guess it was June of 45. June of 45? Yeah. So you got married and then you went? No. 44. Okay, I gotcha. Okay. <laughs> I gotcha. June of 44. Okay, uh, arrived in June 44. What was the base like? What kind of barracks did they put you up in? And yeah, I had tents. You were in tents? Yeah. And was it hot or cold or what? Well, it was depending on the time of year. It was hot in the summertime and cold in the winter. <laughs> did, they, did they have good heating and cooling systems inside well, the tent? didn't have any. So you were just either freezing or... Well, what we do is go down and borrow a little petrol from the airplane. Uh-huh. Borrow what from there? Petrol. Yeah, a little gas from the plane. Okay. And then we have a, a can, about a five-gallon can. Yeah. And you have a copper tube come in from the, the gas that was in the can outside. Yeah. It'd be dripping in and then you'd throw them at you. <laughs> wow, so you'd have open flame inside your tent? <laughs> no, it, 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 it was a... Oh, the copper had hot liquid running through it? Oh, no, it was just a tank, a can. Uh-huh. Like you see now, and you had to cut an opening in it. And, mm -hmm. and then that's how we heated the tent. Okay. And we had bomb fuses, mm -hmm. and they come in cans, and we'd stack them on top of the other sir for a, a, a chimney. Oh, they they had to be depleted bomb fuses, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. gotcha. So, they were they were kind of tubular these bomb fuses, I guess. Yeah, they're about that long. And they were metal pipe, kind of. And they made a metal pipe, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, would they would they after they were used they would stay inside the aircraft, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Were bombs from the aircraft is what they were from the bomb fuses? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, where did y'all eat? Did y'all have a chow hall or? Yeah, we had a, well, when we first got over there, where there wasn't that much, we had a club mm -hmm. that we built, mm -hmm. and then we had a, enough room in there for the, a Marhar squadron to eat. Uh-huh. And was the food, what was the food like? Oh, s spam, mostly. Mostly spam? Yeah, we didn't have... Was it really mostly spam? It really was. It, they cook, cook it out in how many different ways, but it was still spam. <laughs> they give you bread or like... Oh yeah. Okay. They bake bread. Did y'all get to leave the base and visit Italian people or anything like that? Well, there was, see, this was enemy territory. Then. Yeah. So it really wasn't much you could... Go see. No, huh? So. We'd go over to Barry, Italy. Barry? Yeah. And uh, was it was the stuff to buy there, or could you buy like tourist? I mean, like, could you buy anything Italian while you're there? Or? Oh yeah, you could buy some Italian stuff, but I don't know. I didn't see anything that looked like it was worthwhile. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, let's see. Okay, so how long after you uh, got there in Cherignola did they start flying you? Well, just as soon as we got there, so practically. You got there. Were you one of the first crews there, or was there already? Oh, no, cruises? there was some already some crews there. How long have they been there? I mean, how long had that base been open for flying the aircraft out of there? I don't remember, but was I it? imagine just a few months. Just a few months, so it's yeah. fairly new. Yeah, I know the first time we landed, this metal runway stuff that they clamped together. Yeah. Why, well, the first time you land on it. Scared the hell out of you. Yeah. <laughs> so, the, so the runway wasn't a standard issue American runway. It, was, it wasn't metal. It wasn't concrete. They had a metal runway over there. Yeah. Italy? Well, they had big things that about maybe eight feet long and about a foot wide, and they hooked together. Yeah. And so that was your runway. Was kind of a. a you could take it apart and put it back together? Yeah, uh -huh. Okay, so it sounds temporary. 
Well, it was definitely separate. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, I guess every time you hit, <laughs> yeah, it would be loud. And another thing that was... They didn't tell you about that before you landed there the first time? No, I just I never heard of it before. <laughs> I, saw you, I thought the bottom was coming out of the airplane. <laughs> wow. And uh, another ahead. thing that really shocked me was that they, I told you about they'd land, they line us up and then we'd go off, they'd flag us off in 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. And the reason they did that was so that they assemble in groups, mm -hmm. and then the groups would, to the 15th Air Force, and there'd be oh, maybe a thousand airplanes in the sky at one time, all in formation, just going over and over, uh -huh. and dropping bombs. <laughs> So if, if they spaced you out too far apart, y'all couldn't be in formation. Well, it, it, you, you had to use too much power to get caught up. Okay. Okay. And they just, you just pay attention to the red lines. You just Did you ever lose the engine during takeoff or anything? Like that? Not during takeoff, but lost the engine before. Yeah, we'll talk about those in a little bit. So you flew how many? You flew fifty that time from Cherignola. Yeah. Fifty missions, and all of them took off. What? They all took off, and you completed them. Well, I guess that's yeah, not your question. You don't get credit for it. You don't complete it. Well, see, what I'm getting at is nowadays, you know, our planes, and we're not doing combat missions, but a lot of times, well, not a lot of times, but sometimes their plane we can't take off because we'll do a hydraulic check and it won't, it will have a leak or yeah. we'll have a problem and we'll decide not to take off. But all your missions took off. As planned, right? Well, no, some people didn't make it for one reason or another. Okay, okay, so it's kind of the same way. I see, you're talking about a jet air, jet engine too, and these recepts, yeah. they, they were nothing like the jet Yeah, no. <laughs> and then the turbos and things like that, you lose a turbo and you can't stay with the formation. Yeah. And, uh, so, what was, do you remember your first mission, what that was like? Yeah. What was that? Linz, Austria. We bombed the Hermann Goring tank works. Okay, and how'd that go? Oh, it went pretty good, usually. You didn't have any, uh, did you, any, any enemy aircraft meet you? or well, not any fire? aircraft on that one, but that, that's another thing that, that's when, that's when it gets really exciting. <laughs> When the enemy aircraft are shooting at you? Oh, yeah. Well, right, because what imagine. they do is they they shoot a tracer, about one in every th three shells is a tracer. Yeah. And you can see it coming at you. Yeah. <laughs> and, and can you, what's it like when it hits? Does, you, does it hit the aircraft? Do you hear a bullet hit the aircraft? No, you can't really hear it. But, mm -hmm. but you know it's being hit? Well, you don't really know. Oh, yeah. Until you land and you see holes. Yeah, until you land and see, they see holes. So you can't hear a tink tink or a ink Well, out. I don't know. Sometimes it, I think we could hear the flak hitting the side yeah. of it. Just yeah. It lost velocity. Yeah. Huh. Okay, so in Linz, Austria, you bombed a, what was that place? There's a bomb factory? Uh, Hermann Goring Tank Works. Okay. I believe that's what it was, okay. but I don't remember the rest of them. But I don't. Even no, I know you won't remember all of them, but the first one. And so it took off. You dropped the the. You had coordinates where you were going to drop a bomb at, or do you? Yeah. Uh, well, we, we you go and the, the, the bomb sites that we that the bombardiers used. Mm -hmm. They you fly into a certain point, then the bombardier would get it lined up. The bombardier the this is very bold. The, the bomb site would fly the airplane. Okay. Keep it on the straight and narrow, and then <laughs> for just a few minutes, then they'd drop the bomb. So the bombardier's whole job was to know how to get the bomb to land exactly where he wants it to. That's right. That's, okay. And, and so the pilot during that time will follow the direction of the bombardier telling him to go. Yeah, just he'd take it over. Oh, he would fly the aircraft, the bombardier? Uh, the bombardier would fly it with, the, with his bomb sight. Really? So there was control on the bomb sight that would somehow steer the aircraft? Yeah. Wow, okay. So you all would take your hands off the yokes? Or you didn't have to take it off, you could rest it on there, but... Uh -huh. 
But you would feel, would the yokes move when he was moving his... Uh... Well, I think they did because he was, he would try to get it so that he, they could release the bombs mm -hmm. through the bomb site. So could he tell after you dropped the bomb whether or not it hit the target? Well, no, you should stay around that long. Oh, okay. But there'd be other ships that would fly mm -hmm. in and check the damage. Mm -hmm. And same height as what y'all were? Well, I don't know what side they went in as. But were they B-24s? Were they other aircraft? Well, we had B-24s and B-17s in the... Okay, in the... In our inventory. And so it's, it'd be just... Did you, so sometimes you might have checked somebody else's bomb yeah, damage, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And would y'all just do that from a bombardier scope? or well, No, they'd have cameras in the plane. Oh, really? Okay, okay. And... Uh, so, would y'all get debriefed on, like, say, when you landed after bombing the tank works? Would yeah, they, yeah, you come yeah. back and they would tell you how it was good because y'all hit it or y'all missed it or did you play? <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, they would give you a debrief on that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Sure. You, you had a briefing before and debriefing afterwards. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of the time they, they'd have the information pretty quick as to whether or not it was successful. Uh, they, they really wouldn't have it too quick mm -hmm. when we get to be debriefed ordinarily, but they'd have the data later on. Okay. Um, but that was rather not a very good system for bombing, truthfully. Why is that? Well, they just hadn't <laughs> come up with anything that was that good yet. Okay, so I mean, yeah, it's kind of just dropping a bomb, that, you know, from... Yeah. How, how, how high were y'all flying when you dropped a bomb? Oh, about 20 to 22,000 feet. Yeah, I imagine it's hard to, <laughs> to, <laughs> to do, and... Uh, I never did think we did too good a job on that, but yeah. it's neither here nor there. <laughs> so, uh, how often did... Do you know how many missions that you, you had enemy aircraft... Um, trying to attack you, or out of the 50? Oh, I don't know, there, there weren't, uh, as farther we went along, I don't know if you've heard of this, these black guys that were... Tuskegee Airmen? Yeah. Yeah? And they flew cover for us, mm -hmm. and then they had red-nosed P-51s, uh -huh. and they had orders, they weren't allowed to chase the enemy planes out of the when they were in the, in the formation. Mm -hmm. So they would stay right with the formations mm -hmm. and it, they really had ordered they can't even leave it. They're just to protect the fighters, the bombers. Mm -hmm. And boy after that we really... <laughs> because they were protecting you you didn't really see too many... Enemies. No, that's what I say because they, oh you'd see some but they, they would stay with us so that they would, uh, the enemy wouldn't be able to get in on us too good. Did uh, did you, were they based, the uh, Tuskegee Airmen, were they based out of Cherignola? No, I don't know where they were based out of. Did you ever meet any of them? Oh yeah, well, there's, I don't know you've heard of the Dedalians. The Italian? The, the Dedalian, it's a club for pilots. Okay. And we had a couple of Tuskegee Airmen in, the, in our Dedalian flight out at the base. Yeah, did you did you like them or? Oh, sure, yeah, just like the rest of us. Yeah, <laughs> don't know. Some guys probably didn't take to them as good as others. I imagine. I don't know, but but for my way of thinking, they really helped us out quite a bit. So, uh, all right. But the thing that got me was that when the the enemy would come at you, you were flying like this, they'd come straight at you. Mm -hmm. And then they'd roll over on their back, <laughs> and then they'd start spraying out, and just spray <laughs> the whole formation like. So they would come at you nose to nose, their nose would be facing you. Yeah, a lot of times they do, other times they'll come right into the formation almost, and mm -hmm. they get, it can get a little hectic. <laughs> yeah, I imagine so. Dude, you didn't ever see, uh, towards the end of the war, I guess, the Germans had, had made a jet aircraft? Yeah, I saw that, 162. Yeah? It was the 162 was a kind of jet? I think, yeah, it was a jet, but I, we just saw it. We didn't, 
What did you think? Did you think, wow, it's fast? Or? Well, no, it, it just flew alongside of us. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it didn't, it, he didn't attack us. I wonder why not. I don't know. They, were, they just started building them, I know, and maybe they didn't have many of them to... To potentially lose? Yeah. <laughs> what? Um, okay, so uh, you crash-landed twice, right? In the, was that both out of the, those 50... Well, the first time, I don't know what happened, but something happened with the main gear on the right side. Mm -hmm. The tire was just flopping around, the wheel was just flopping around. So when you tried to take it in after takeoff, it never came no, on no, with it? it fell out when we were on the mission. Oh, okay. And we were coming back. And so, so how did y'all know? I mean, I guess the well, waste gunner saw it? You could see it. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, the gunner could see it. Okay. So when we landed there, why well, we try to keep the that right wing up as much as we could, but mm -hmm. then when it goes down, why? Well, <laughs> yeah. So was was it swinging around and hitting it, the aircraft, or no? It was just hanging there. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened to it because you thought if it something had hit it that, that the wing had fallen off. Yeah. And afterwards, they they weren't able to tell. Like when y'all landed, y'all never found out? Well, I, I never did hear. I don't mm -hmm. think they... They probably spent a lot of time to figure they, it out. They, they weren't too interested in what happened. They were just interested in keeping birds flying. So, uh, so yeah, okay, so you were flying, and, and uh, did you feel anything? Or the first thing you hear probably is from the, the waste gunner? Or to uh, I can't remember now. Mm -hmm. How you found out? Yeah, I don't remember. Do you remember where you're flying over when that happened? No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> so. Did you uh, realize how long that's been? About 40, 50, 60 <laughs> years. So like that. I'm just, hey, I'm just <laughs> trying to, you know, get an accurate representation of what's going on. So was it hot or cold? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, well, I know one time we were coming back from the target and we'd lost the turbo and we couldn't stay with the formation. Mm -hmm. And. There were some clouds around, so I put it up in the clouds and hoping that nobody would see us. <laughs> oh, because when you're out of formation, you're a lot easier oh, to yeah, shoot down. Oh, yeah, that's just set and duck. Okay. The only way you can really keep from getting shot down is you have to get right down on the deck, about 50 feet. Mm -hmm. And then the fighters can't come in because your your gunners can get them. Mm -hmm. They fighter, the guns are fixed, mm -hmm. so you can't get right in back of you so they can shoot you down. Whereas if, if you're higher, if you're higher they can come in from all different angles and... Okay, so you reduce the amount of different ways they can come get yeah. you. Anyway, the, in the soup and all of a sudden it had an aerial on the right on the nose of the plane and all of a sudden the thing looked the size of a hard bat, a hardball bat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's that's ice all over the bird. Oh. And they all the de-icing equipment they took it off the planes because it was the part that they put on the leading edge of the wings mm -hmm. that they couldn't notice if you had a hole in the it was, that kept them from patching all the holes. Okay. So they took that out and then the de-icers on the props they took those out because they were catch on fire. Okay. Anyway, we had to go over the Alps. <laughs> yeah, with ice on your wings. Yeah, but we finally got down to where it was warm enough. <laughs> and thawed it out while yeah. you were flying? Yeah. Just scared the hell out of me. <laughs> oh man, and so y'all landed back safely that yeah. time, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, and you said it was the size of a baseball bat on the front wing? Yeah, it's, you know, it's like the just like a wire sitting there, and then there's just that big around. <laughs> God. Okay. So the time when you had the uh, right gear hanging down, how did you get that plane down? Well, we just flew it down and kept the, kept the right wing high as long as we could, and then when it settles down, we, we settled down in the dirt. We kept it off the runway. Okay, because was it the metal runway again? Yeah. And yeah, so it would probably knock some pieces loose or something? Yeah. Okay. 
And so how was that landing? Did it tear off the gear or break anything? Oh, yeah, it tore off everything over there. They had to put a new wing on it. Oh, really? So they used the same plane. They just yeah. added a whole new wing. Yeah. You don't know how long that took them to do. Well, not very long. For I was really shocked. Boy, I mean, is those guys, they must have worked 24 hours a day. Yeah. Um, what? One of my best friends was a mechanic over there in our, in our group. Mm -hmm. And and what what did he do? I mean, how did you know him? Well, he's a kid I run around with at home. Oh, he was. He was from yeah. Springfield. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. So what kind of stuff would you do for uh, relaxation and, and their fun while you were on the base? Did y'all have time to do anything? Well, there wasn't much to do, truthfully. Yeah. And going into Barry wasn't anything. You could get some lousy ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, one interesting thing, there was a plane crashed up in Potenza, Italy. I can't even remember now how far up it was. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we went up there, a couple of us, maintenance officer, I don't know why I went with him, but anyway, we did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and we got up there and we ran into the best stuff we'd run into, Spumani. Spumani? Spumani. Spumati? Oh, that's it, a, the champagne? Or it's, like, it's like champagne. <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> anyway, we started drinking that stuff. <laughs> it goes down like Tony Pop. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't act, act like Sody Pop, does it? It got you drunk? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> About three days later we woke up. <laughs> uh, so Italy was a uh, uh, hostile country in World War II, Mussolini. And yeah. did it, was the base safe from uh, like ground attack? Well, but we didn't have any to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. I think the Italians had given up on. Oh, really? Yeah, they. They weren't too strong of a. They weren't too port. strong of a Nazi. Yeah. Um, anyway, the, the most interesting part is why I wasn't a POW. What? Why I oh. wasn't a POW. Okay, yeah, well, go ahead and tell me that story. Well, anyway, we were coming back from the target. Mm -hmm. And we had bombed a. This was late in the war, really. Mm -hmm. And the Germans were pulling out of the, the Balkans. Okay. Coming back through Yugoslavia. Okay. So the uh, British had made a raid at Dubrovnik, which is a real picturesque town in Yugoslavia at the coast. Mm hmm. Anyway, I don't know what happened, but three of the props ran away. You probably don't know what that means. Either. No. They go, they start just spinning around and don't do you any good. Is it kind of like cavitating? Is that? Oh. Yeah. Well, it gets going so they get going so fast they get <laughs> going the speed of sound. And so they're not moving air anymore. No. Okay. But three of the four. What would cause that? Like your angle of attack or something? Or? I don't know what caused it. Okay. Anyway, they ran away and we were just crossing the coast of uh, Yugoslavia going back to Italy. Okay. And we piddled around with them. So I started throwing everything out of the airplane, the guns and everything else. Why were you doing that? Well, hoping we'd get the props going again so we could get back home. Well, I was throwing guns out of the aircraft get the props going again. Well, it, it, that's if they got going again. Oh, okay. <laughs> because you lighten up everything you can. Oh, lighten it up, okay. Anyway, we were across the coast of Yugoslavia going out in the, I guess that's the Adriatic Sea now. I'm not good at geography. Yeah, anyway. We were going down like a rock. <laughs> okay. So I t t turned around and I called the crew and I told them, put your parachutes on and get ready to bail out uh, because this thing is not flying. Mm -hmm. And anyway, I said, now what I'm going to do is I must hope I can make the coast so you don't mm -hmm. have to land out in the water. Okay. Or I'm ditching the airplane. It's not a 
is not a good thing because you can't. It sinks and you can't. Yeah. You're in the water and it's November. Yeah. <laughs> no. And you, yeah. So, so anyway, we we turn around and sure enough, I made the coast. Mm -hmm. And I rang the bell. It was, it's to eject bell. or to yeah. get out. Yeah. Is that what the bell was for? To yeah. tell the crew to yeah. get out of the plane. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, then. Yeah, let's see. Oh, yeah. I, so I was ready to go, and the bombardier waited until I uh, took. He saw my feet come off the rudders, and then he bailed out. Okay. So I turned around to go, mm -hmm. and there was the engineer standing there. He lost his fur. <laughs> How did he lose it? Well, I'm not real sure, but I think somebody was handing it to him, and <laughs> he didn't get it. <laughs> and so this was uh, John Devine. John Devine, yeah. Okay, so he's standing there without his parachute? <laughs> afraid to tell me. <laughs> oh, he was afraid to tell you? What was his rank? Do you remember? He's a tech sergeant, I think. Tech sergeant? <laughs> okay. Anyway, I said, well, I guess we got to put this thing someplace. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, you know, when you look out where the pilot sits, you look out and there's mm -hmm. a little spot you can see. It widens yeah. out a bit, but mm -hmm. luckily, I looked out there and there was water. Okay. And I thought we put it down there. The only trouble was that I thought I was overshooting it. <laughs> you thought you were going to hit land on the other side? or? Yeah, I didn't want to hit land. <laughs> yeah, okay. So anyway, I dove it right into the water. And, and well, I told John just get in the go pilot seat. seat. Mm -hmm. And so he got in the go pilot seat, but he didn't put the seatbelt on. Oh, no. <laughs> so when he when we hit, he flew out. Out of the aircraft? Yeah. So you hit, it was a huge slam, I imagine, like a, a huge, like a car crash, probably. Oh, probably more than that, he hit it, hit it about 200 miles an hour. Okay. <laughs> hit water at 200 miles an hour. Is it, Okay. I've got some pictures around here of what's left of the airplane, but I don't, I can't, I don't know where they are at the moment. Okay, yeah, maybe later we'll get those. If, uh, but anyway, so... Well, John flew out anyway. Why, when it settled down, why, my fa I was underwater. Mm -hmm. And but you were still in the pilot seat. Yeah, I was still in the seat. They they had an odd seat on the darn bird. Mm -hmm. that, it was thick steel mm -hmm. around the back, mm -hmm. on the seat, and then around the face a little bit, about that big, about that wide, I guess. Mm -hmm. And Boy, I tell you, that really protected me. Okay. Well, that's good. It was padded, I hope, right? Oh, no, it was just... Metal. Metal. But the, the seat... The seat belts... I don't know if you ever... You never crashed in an airplane. Like no. <laughs> Those seat belts, military type, where mm -hmm. you got the... Shoulder, shoulder and the... And the belt. Boy. You know, after the war... Mm -hmm. My first car, the first thing I put in, you know what it was? A seat belt. Oh, you put in seat belts before they were <laughs> necessary. I was convinced. Yeah. Anyway, uh, John was thrown out. He, he was really beat up. He had bones sticking out. And yeah. I don't know what now. Yeah. Anyway, I couldn't get out of the airplane because mm -hmm. my feet were down, caught in some bunch of something or other. Yeah. And. Anyway, I was underwater, so I passed out. I guess it was just a matter of seconds later because I woke up and my face was the only sticking out of the water. Oh, really? So you floated up to the to the top? I don't know what happened, truthfully. And were you still in your seatbelt? You seat? still in the seatbelt, but feet I couldn't get to. <laughs> I had boots on, mm -hmm. fur-lined boots, and my shoes. Yeah. I had to just keep going in and out and in and out of that water until I finally got it. Until you got your feet out of the boots? Or? Yeah. I, got, I had to get my feet out of the shoes, too. To get them released. So you kept digging down, holding your breath, untying something, yeah, yeah. and then going back down yeah. over and over. <laughs> and the whole time John's floating in the water? Well, no, he was out standing on the shore. He was hollering at me. I could hear him. I was underwater. 
Oh, really? <laughs> And so he's he's got what kind of bones? Is it like his thigh, thigh bone, or do you remember? His arms. His arms bones were sticking and out. Teeth out, and he was really beat up. Yeah. Anyway, uh, there was that Yugoslavia. By the way, we've been back, back over there four or five times. Yeah. Trying to find out where that happened. The airplane was. And, and, yeah. And I can't talk to anybody in Yugoslavia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Even in the hotels, like. <laughs> Oh, okay. So this was after the war. You tried yeah, to find that's it. that's right. But anyway, what happened then? You got well, out. Well, yeah, I finally got out. And, mm-hmm. and there's a guy there, at, uh, where we, right where we crashed, mm-hmm. that had lived in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. And he'd just gone back before the war to visit his family, and he got caught and he couldn't get out. Okay, he got caught by who? What? By the Yugoslav government. Okay. He was, the people we went down with were Tito's people, you've heard it. (laughs) Tito, I imagine, well, he was one of the communists. Okay. And then in the northern part of Yugoslavia, Mihalovic was the guy that was in charge, and he was like, on the German side. Okay. We were lucky we went down where we did, rather than a little farther north. Okay. Otherwise, we'd been POW. Okay. Well, anyway, the British had made a raid on Dubrovnik, and oh, and not one other thing. <laughs> it was rather comical, truthfully. The guy said, "Is there any first aid kit on the plane?" <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, there's one, and then I thought, "Oh my saint of that!" I never paid any attention to the damn thing. <laughs> What do you mean? It wasn't. It, I knew about where it was. But you don't. But I didn't know even how it was hooked. <laughs> oh, okay. Huh. So I had to go back in the water again <laughs> and get the first aid kit up. Yeah. I don't know whether they ever used it or not. But On John? What? On John? Yeah. Okay. But anyway, when we got. In the house there, why? I asked this guy, I said, can we get John some, some uh, medical attention? Mm-hmm. He says, well, we can't do anything until it gets dark, but I'll see what I can do. So he's sitting, where, where is he staying at with, with his broken arms for hours? Well, he was in this house. Okay. And I was in there with him. Okay. Well, I'm not in the same room with him, but I was in there with him. And who was, who was, who's, I'm sorry, um, whose house was it? I think. Well, I don't know whose house it was. It's just a Yugoslavian? It's just just one of the communist Yugoslavian. And they they decided to help you out? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, they were on our side. Okay. Mostly them. Okay. Anyway, I asked him if he could get us some medical attention, and he said, I don't know, but he said, I'll sure try to find out. Mm -hmm. So when it got dark, why they put us out on a, flatbed truck mm-hmm. with uh, a mattress on there and John and I flopped on that. Mm-hmm. We rode just a little ways. It was dark and uh, the mountain well, road. What was John like? Do you remember? Was he complaining or was he oh, he laughing? Or was, he, he... was he cracking jokes or anything? <laughs> no, he wasn't cracking any jokes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so y'all are in the back of the pickup truck? No, it was a oh, flat, flatbed fl- truck. and. And I, we didn't go very far, I know that, and they stopped. And this guy came back to me and he said, now, that's a German ambulance, mm-hmm. but it's one of our guys driving it and he's in a German uniform. Okay. Now then, he said, the, the, the British had just made this raid at Dubrovnik, mm-hmm. so they're going to run you right through the German lines, right through the British lines, <laughs> and into the hospital. Wow. So this is my trip on why I wasn't a POW. <laughs> so you get in the back of this ambulance. Right, yeah. As, and y'all are patients. You you, you lay down on the stretcher. Yeah, or, yeah. And uh, he when he so the, why did the Germans let him go through his line? Well, it was a German ambulance, so they weren't going to bother with it. I think that's what it comes down to. I don't know. Oh, and you don't know why the British let a German ambulance into? <laughs> oh, well, the British. Well, we let a German ambulance in. <laughs> oh, y'all would. Okay. Okay. Anyway, so. But once, okay, go ahead, I'm sorry. 
So that, that's the most interesting part of the story. <laughs> so when he got medical treatment, and that was his last flight before they sent him home, I'm sure. Yeah. John. Well, he was in the hospital for quite a while. Yeah. What happened to your uh, other uh, guys who made it out of the aircraft? Oh, well, they ba all bailed out. And they were fine? Yeah. They, they, didn't, they weren't behind enemy lines where they bailed out? Well, they were in this communist... Mm -hmm. In area. Yugoslavia? Yeah. So and they, so they weren't, the, the communists weren't against the Americans at that time. Then. Well, the communist Tito's people weren't against. Okay, I got you, I got you. In fact, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that the British uh, were talking to Tito then, I think. They, wanted, they were trying to make some arrangement. Whether they ever did or not, I don't know. I know that uh, that was on the 5th of November, 44. And the, this, you know, I can't think of the guy's name, is head of the, oh heavens, he wrote a book anyway on the war, he was a German. Yeah. And I read the book and they were back in at Dubrovnik by Christmas. And they had a church service there. From 5 November when you crashed no. to, to Christmas. You talk about quick. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so when y'all got to the hospital, uh, did, did, did they transfer uh, John? Well, no. They just took him and put him in the British hospital. Okay. And put me in there with him. And the only problem I had was I'd been in that cold water so long I couldn't get warm. Oh, okay. And I was shaking and I walked in and this brigadier that was running the... The, uh, the hospital? The, no, the British troops there. Mm -hmm. He says, you don't have to be afraid anymore. And I said, I'm not afraid. <laughs> oh. And so did you just eventually warm up like overnight or...? Well, they put me in a bathtub uh -huh. and put hot water in and, didn't start it out real hot, but they kept changing it. So by morning, I was. <laughs> oh, okay. So it worked overnight. Okay. And then they put us on a, a fishing boat in the Brovenick and took us over to Barry Italy. To Barry Italy? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. where our hospital was over there. And so, how? Uh, what damages, what injuries did you get? Actually, the only thing I got was a few cuts on the face. Okay. And bruised. Really? The doc said he didn't know that I was black or white. <laughs> oh, that's how bruised you were? Yeah. Huh. But I wasn't hurt. Yeah. In fact, it was too long after, so they couldn't even sew my nose up in her face. They couldn't? Well, it was too late to eat if you... Oh, because you didn't do it soon enough? Yeah. Okay. Um, so that was the, that's the interesting part of it. I thought, uh, why I'm not a POW? <laughs> no, there's a bunch of interesting parts of it. And uh, so the two crashes. One was with the uh, right wing wood or right the right wing. gear landing gear was. And the second one was when the props uh, ran ahead of you. Yeah. And then did that happen on other aircraft where the props would? I had never heard of it happening, but uh, afterwards, why some of the maintenance people said it was common on that. Huh. Okay. I don't. I've never heard of it. I, like I say, we the only thing you could do is you, you could. Uh, oh heavens! <laughs> Boy, sometimes my head just don't work. Out. No, mine doesn't work either. <laughs> the only thing you could do when your props get out of hand, they told you you yes, could. You, you hit the feathering button. Feathering. Yeah. And that turns the prop so that it's not not spitting or anything. It just but you turn three of them that way, and you can't use an outboard motor. Yeah. So you could have somehow changed the angle of the uh, yeah the angle of the blades that the yeah you know, the blade is hitting the air. Did you you don't remember trying that or not? Oh trying yeah, it? they tried it and tried it and tried it. Yeah. Okay. Was, it was really working on it. The engineer. Yeah, I imagine they were trying everything if you. Fall out of the sky, and it didn't work. Yeah, no, just we still ended up with three of them still not working. So uh, you got back, and did they debrief you? They they want to know what happened. Obviously, oh, yeah. and I had to sign it. Uh, 
I don't know they call it system to write the plane off. To write the what? Write the airplane off. Oh yeah, like a uh, two hundred fifty thousand dollars. But it was signed before I signed it. <laughs> yeah, two hundred fifty thousand dollar aircraft gone, and you don't know if they ever recovered the aircraft. No, they didn't. Okay. How did they get pictures? I guess the Yugoslavians took pictures. Yeah, evidently, I don't know how they got them, but mm -hmm. they came to address to me. Huh. And sure enough, there they were. You can see. The, and they didn't have a return address or no note or anything? Not to my knowledge. I don't know what it was. Huh. But I'd given them everything I had. <laughs> and uh, I'd given them my $50. Yeah. When you flew on a mission, did you normally fly the same aircraft or yeah. did you just swap in it? Oh, really? Yeah, you, you had one assigned to you as long as it was all right. Why? Yeah. What was your uh, tell number? Do you remember? Is there, what, did y'all call it a name, or how did y'all identify it? Uh, ours was Yellow Nan. Yellow Nan? Yeah. Okay. N-A-N, like Nana? And, no, just N. Oh, Yellow N. Yeah. The, okay. The, 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 uh, the vertical stabilizers on the plane were painted yellow, and then there was an N put on it. Okay. A yellow Nan. Okay. And... Uh, so they debriefed you, had you sign off the aircraft, and uh, uh, then they, did they give you a lot, I mean, were they angry, or were they in? No, oh, no, no, they were not anything to be angry about, you, yeah. you couldn't prove nothing anyway. <laughs> yeah, and so did, you didn't fly any more missions after that, or did you? Oh, yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah. I mean, on that trip? Oh, no. Uh, you went home? No, no, I flew two more missions after. Oh, really? Yeah. And it all bruised up still? Well, I, it was about a month afterwards. I, oh, okay. And were you nervous that next mission? Well, not really, because I talked to him and he'd let me fly. So I would been, I'd been flying a little bit, just mm -hmm. enough to. So you would be used to it again. Yeah. And uh, so then. So your next two missions, they were kind of uneventful, I imagine? Well, they were just like all the rest of them. They <laughs> had, yeah. We were lucky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, when you were there, did uh, uh, some B-24s not make it home on missions? Oh, yeah, lots of 